Now, the rest of the story. Doesn't LFA Stoddard sound like a corporation? But he was a person. He was an insurance agent living in St. Paul, Minnesota. He represented the New York Life Insurance Company. Now, St. Paul was virtually on the American frontier in those days. It was difficult talking life insurance to some of those proud, rugged individualists whose gaze was fixed on an earthly horizon. So, Mr. Studdard got an idea. A former Army officer himself, he realized that even in peacetime, a soldier just naturally thinks about war. He, the trained fighting man, is therefore unusually conscious of the fragility of life. So it was in the early 1870s that Agent Stoddard mounted his horse and rode out to make the rounds of the various army posts in the region. In his saddlebags were enough provisions to last him from fort to fort, also a generous supply of unsigned insurance policies. June 1873, Mr. Stoddard reached Fort Snelling, Promptly he met and befriended Captain Miles Keogh, an amiable young cavalry officer. But why would he need life insurance, asked Miles. After all, we're not at war. But on the other hand, Studdard insisted, one would not have to be killed in a war to be dead. Anything could happen, you never know. But I'm not even married, Miles countered. Who would my beneficiary be? Mr. Studdard explained that a young man in his position would do best to name himself as his own beneficiary. That way, in the event of his death, his estate would receive the insurance money, and, of course, he could change his last will and testament any time he wanted without notifying New York life. Well, don't you know, Mr. Studdard sold Captain Keogh that $10,000 policy and the insurance man's success continued the following year at Fort Totten in Dakota Territory. He sold Lieutenant James Porter a policy worth $5,000. A month later, Stoddard struck pay dirt in Fort Lincoln. First, he managed to interest a 29-year-old lieutenant who happened also to be the brother-in-law of the general of the fort. And the general, in turn, introduced Stoddard to a captain named Yates, and all three men purchased insurance policies. And it would be two years before Agent Studdard reached Fort Ripley back in Minnesota, where he sold Lieutenant Crittenden a $10,000 policy. Now, I have mentioned six of Mr. Studdard's clients, each a soldier in the United States Army, three lieutenants, two captains, and a general. They represented four widely separated posts, and their policies were issued over a three-year period but they shared a common destiny. You see, the three lieutenants and the two captains wound up serving under the general. They all rode out together in June of 1876 to fight the Battle of the Little Bighorn. The general's name, you remember, that's right, Custer. Custer, supposedly surprised and certainly otherwise unprepared, rode to his death very well insured. Now you know... The rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. Just a quick recap on the battle. Some people call it the Battle of Little Bighorn. Native Americans called it the Battle of Greasy Grass Creek. Others refer to the battle simply as Custer's Last Stand. On June 25, 1876, Lieutenant General George Armstrong Custer led more than 260 soldiers, including his younger brother Tom Custer, into battle at this site against thousands of Lakota and North Cheyenne warriors, including Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse at the Little Bighorn River in what is now Montana. Custer's men were seriously outnumbered and decimated, None of the U.S. soldiers, including Custer or his younger brother Tom, survived the battle. Three days later, Sergeant Ferdinand Culbertson, a member of the burial detail assigned to retrieve the remains of the 7th Cavalry, moved the body of one of Custer's soldiers and found something unexpected. Lying underneath the soldier was the blood-stained cavalry flag used by the cavalry 
on that fateful day. It was made of silk, measured 33 inches by 27 inches, and featured 34 gold stars. Now all of the other flags were captured by the victorious Native Americans. This site is now in the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Park, which you can and should visit. In 1895, the Detroit Institute for the Arts acquired the flag for just $54, but after the owning the flag for more than a century, decided to sell the prized piece of American history and use the proceeds for future purchases of Native American art. In December 2010, Sotheby's Auction House put the flag up for auction with an estimated value ranging between $2 million and $5 million. The flag ultimately sold for $2.2 million to an unidentified American private collector. In the century and a half since the Battle of Little Bighorn, people's views or thoughts on Custer have changed back and forth. At times, people see Custer as a martyr for the American cause, and at other times, they consider him a villain and an Indian killer. What do you think of Custer? Was he a martyr or a villain? General Custer bought the $5,000 life insurance policy on June the 4th, 1874, two years before he died at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Adjusted for inflation, $5,000 in 1876, the year Custer died, would be almost $143,000 in today's money. Custer's wife, Libby, was the beneficiary on his policy. Due to the shared destiny of Custer and his men, the New York Life Insurance Company had to pay out more than $35,000 for those six policies. Adjusted for inflation, that's about a million dollars in today's money. In the summer of 2006, Fred Sievert, president of the New York Life Insurance Company, visited Fort Abraham Lincoln State Park in North Dakota along with General Custer's house. Fred left with the determination to find Custer's original life insurance policy. And in August 2006, the New York Life Insurance Company presented a copy of the policy along with a donation of $5,000 to the Fort Abraham Lincoln Foundation. You can see this copy of Custer's insurance policy at Fort Abraham Lincoln State Park in North Dakota. It's on display at the Custer House on Custer's actual desk. You know, I'm sure the foundation was eager to accept the $5,000 donation. If only the insurance company had adjusted their donation for inflation. Hmm. Tracy Potter, executive director of Fort Abraham Lincoln Foundation, noted that several of Custer's officers purchased life insurance policies ranging from five dollars to $10,000, while Custer had a $5,000 policy. Tracy quipped, apparently the officers who took out $10,000 policies didn't have quite as much confidence in Custer as he had in himself. I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And as Paul Harvey would say, Good day.